Okay, so we've only got about uh, 10 minutes left. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to talk a little bit about allyship and advocacy uh, for the queer community. Um, so I guess tell us a little bit about what you do for the community and because I know right. you've got you've got a podcast, you've got a blog, you've got a YouTube channel, you're, uh, you've got a summer camp, I think that's happening soon or in the works. So wow, yeah. they gave the gay Christian like banner a summer camp. I bet you get so much hate mail. Um, not yet, but I plan on getting it. <laughs> yeah, uh, good luck. So a few weeks ago, um, uh, I'm in the process of launching my newest project, which is called uh, Big Queer Adventure Co. And we're dedicated to creating spaces, events, and experiences for LGBTQ people to find deep inner healing, uh, chosen family, and rediscover their wild life. And that's the nice elevator pitch. Um, but, <laughs> I was um, old. Yeah, what's this going to look like is like I want to create, um, among other things, a summer camp for queer adults to come hang out, be among other queer people of faith. Or, uh, you know, you don't, I always tell people, I'm just like, you don't have to be Christian if you don't want to. I have so many like queer friends who are just like, yeah, this is not for me. Faith is not for me. I'm like, all right, cool. I don't, I really don't give a shit, to be honest. Uh, but I want you to have space to heal and I want you to have space to connect deeply with people because. I think that's the most important thing in the human experience. It's exactly what you said. It's just like, what do I want? How do I get it? And how do I, you know, love people along the way? That's good religion right there, in my opinion. Um, or maybe good religion is no religion. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll get into that later. Um, other things I do, I, um, I have a YouTube channel where I discuss um, issues of faith, sexuality, gender and justice. Um, I was writing a blog pretty regularly for a long time and still a lot of like my older posts are, you know, my OG essays, which honestly, you ever go back and look at your stuff from a couple years ago and you go, don't do it. Don't do it. It's the uh, best it's way to shatter your own confidence. <laughs> yeah. Or it's also like a really lovely way to like have a front row seat to your own evolution. Mm, oh my sure. gosh. Facebook memories. Just kill me. Oh, man. I mean, this, this show itself has been on the air for a year, and uh, it's it's real hard. It's real hard for me to scroll back through yeah. the old videos. Yeah. So I do that. Um, I also have a podcast called The Tiny Revolution. We're getting ready to, I mean, I keep saying I'm getting ready to drop episode 100. I have been really fucking stressed out this summer, like trying to get this new business venture off the ground. So my podcast is coming back this week. So um, you can find A Tiny Revolution wherever you listen to your podcasts. Um, what else do I do? Um, I think that's like the big things. Like I've been doing videos, mm -hmm. blogs, and podcasts. I go places and speak. Um, yeah, I'm hoping, oh, one big thing, I guess this is fun to share. I'm writing my first book, which is going to be called Bad Theology Kills. And it's going to be dropping hopefully middle of December. So, um, I'm hoping to take on all the bullshit. Nice. But you know, not, not all the bullshit, because how could you take <laughs> not on all, all of it? In, it's in only book. one book. That's yeah. a very long book. Part of, yeah. like, the editor side of me is like, ooh, mid-December, are you self-publishing? Who are you publishing with? Who did you do in your marketing? But I'll <laughs> leave all of that to it for another time. Yeah. Um, I think uh, how can non-theists and atheists and skeptics help? What, what, what does an allyship between... Atheists who share these goals uh, and atheists who share these goals look like for you? Um, it's whatever is the most good for the most people, I think. Mm. It's, you know, it's like if any person, like it's uh, speaking up when, you know, someone's not in the room and then passing the mic when they are in the room, so to speak. So like if you're out there in the world and you see hear somebody talking shit about queer folks, you just say, how do you, hey, I just have a quick question. This is this is my favorite technique to use on people. How do your friends, blank friends feel when you say that? Like, how do your queer friends feel when you say that the homosexuals are ruining America? Oh, you don't have any LGBTQ friends? Well, let me tell you about mine. Um, they're lovely people. Just like go into your own story and just say, or like, you know, it's the same, it's the same thing with any other sort of, uh, justice work like if someone says black lives matter is a terrorist organization you say hey how do you how do your black friends feel when you say that oh i don't have any black friends i'm like oh i didn't know <laughs> i didn't know mm -hmm. um so for me I, I think like allyship for for me when i'm looking at it, it's just um you know 
because at the end of the day, like we're, we want the, I think everybody wants the same thing. Like we, I mean, like not everybody because you know, a lot of Christians want power <laughs> and uh, empire and they want to dominate and like impose their morality on everybody else. Um, but the rest of us who are here for collective liberation, um, I think that's what we're all going for, the collective liberation of everybody and everything. And so when I think about what we want, I said, I want you to have the same opportunities to experience joy as I do. Um, and anything that gets in the way of that is wrong. And so we fight, we stand up, we organize, and also organize, go out to your marches, you know, uh, sign petitions, put a faith post on your Facebook page if that, if that helps. Like, um, it's one of those things where like everybody's very, very traumatized these days and for obvious reasons. And mm -hmm. at the same time, we're coming up on a season of our life where we don't, we have to be, um, we, we can be traumatized and we also have to show up to do the work because yeah. otherwise it will only get worse. Um, and for those of us who like I being I'm I will say I'll count myself as lucky. I have access to mental health care. Um, I have insurance so I can pay for my meds. Um, and I understand a lot of people uh, who struggle with mental health issues can't show up in the same ways I can show up. But for those of us who can, I think that um, I think that we should because yeah, otherwise like, we're all going to get fucked over. <laughs> yeah, I think definitely yeah. think that there's an obligation there. Um, <clears throat> I, I guess the the question that resonates for me is, uh, you know, I, you mentioned Austin and, and all of that. I don't know how much time you spend here. It's a, of course, an incredible city, but part of it is that it is very much a, a beacon city in a lot of ways. Uh, this is a place that so many uh, queer kids who got kicked out of, you know, rural Texas and a lot of rural parts of the South end up here. Uh, so we have a, a huge community of that. We talked to um, a number of different folks who have come in and done interviews with us that put on uh, queer art or performances of these different things. And uh, they've explained about how they've like looked at going into other cities and things. And there's just such a, a specific culture here of, uh, I guess, kind of misfits and, and folks that are all being drawn to that, you know, that pink light in a lot of ways. Uh, and I think that extends to the churches here as well. I am aware of a number of uh, queer Christian organizations here in this city, and I, I don't know about that kind of advocacy work or that type of group really existing, at least not in these numbers, in uh, the rest of the country. So here in this city, as people who really have no interest in propagating the, the notion of a God that can't be proved— not that it doesn't exist, but, you know, I don't necessarily myself feel any time should be wasted on trying to think about it when there's just no evidence to support the notion. All of that being said, what what are we doing together? I mean, what opportunities are there for uh, allyship between the, I guess, progressive or, or queer Christian community and atheists or really just any he decent human being who is, you know, eager to see the world furthered or advanced in these ways? Yeah, um, I think some really, I think, um, way, I mean, I think one big thing uh, around public policy that anyone can get on on is trying to work against and uh, trying to work for uh, making conversion therapy illegal. And what I mean by conversion mm -hmm. therapy mm -hmm. is like same thing as reparative therapy, ex-gay therapy, any sort of program um, that promises or says that they can help you change your sexual orientation or gender identity so that you can be acceptable to God. Mm -hmm. um, these uh, programs I mentioned, Exodus International right now, Bethel's Once Gay Movement is is starting to get a lot more traction. Um, and so I think the one thing that we can, can all unite on is saying like, you know, this practice is wrong and it has been shown to mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually devastate people, mm -hmm. um, to tear apart people's lives, to cause people to take their own life. And so in my opinion, in my opinion, it's not even my opinion. It's just the truth. It's like, we have to stop this. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, uh, there are many movements across um, that's, I think Colorado recently just passed um, a ban on ex-gay therapy for people 18 and younger. Mm -hmm. um, and I, 
in my mind, I'm hoping in my lifetime we can get it passed across all 50 states that this type of practice would be made illegal. Because here's the thing is that like uh, ex-gay therapy exists in all sorts of different forms now. Yeah. Like, they don't yeah. call it ex-gay therapy and they don't call it conversion therapy. They don't call it, like, their branding is really good. Let's yeah. be honest, sex scene, it's beautiful. And it's like, we want you to be a part of our family. But really like it's, um, it's toxic theology that's killing people. And so um, part of the work and the reason like, you know, again, I, I do the, I, like I come in to do the theological work of things. And then I also want to come in and do the work of organizing because at the end of the day, um, we can have a thousand different conversations with pastors around, around why they're being shitty to their people. And that's not going to move them at all. But you know, it is going to move people organizing them, getting, getting the stories that actually matter in front of lawmakers um, so that we can make this practice illegal. I think that's one thing. And then on top of that, like, I mean, all of our liberation is interlocked anyway. So it's like, if we're not helping out, um, every other community that's getting, you know, shit on, then like, it's not really justice, is it? Right. It's yeah. all, it's all the same issues, just different facets of it. Yeah. But I think like off the top of my head, that's the, that's a clear one that we both. Yeah, that's so a it's, good it's suggestion. It's finding yeah. those issues, uh, that we're, we're on the same page about. You know, and, and accepting help from all sides. Uh, because you're right. I mean, to, to be very clear to the audience, there have been bills attempted at the national level, but nothing that is stuck. Uh, but this is a, a practice that is vehemently opposed by the World Health Organization, the Center for Disease Control, for the American Psychiatric Association, uh, because it, it is incredibly damaging and absolutely evidenceless. Uh, so it's, it's madness to me that it's not something that has already been shut down. But... Here we are. Welcome to America. Right. I think it's. I think that this is good. I think that this was a good conversation because right now, I think there are a lot of people, a lot of people in power, a lot of politicians who are counting on the us versus them menta- mentality, mm-hmm. and they're counting on okay, we've got the Christians, you know, or like we've got the the liberals, or you know, however they want to slice it. And then they get their little section of the pie and they can count on those votes or they can count on that support. But if we have these conversations and we're like, oh, wait, we agree on this. We won't stand for this. Suddenly we are a much larger force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. Yeah. I see myself having a lot more like in common with um, a lot more with like atheists these days anyway, if I'm being honest. (laughs) It's, it's one of the, and also just like what I love about hanging out with atheists is like, I don't have the pressure of like being on. Yeah, you don't have to be. explain it over and over and over. <laughs> oh, it's like, there's like, you know, God's probably not real. I'm just like, you're probably right. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> That's like, it's like, <laughs> well, uh, the water is, is pretty warm and uh, we've got cookies over here. So, you know, just <laughs> let us know. 